Okay, back with another example for piecewise defined functions, and this time I've got three pieces, and I'm going to need three sections on my graph paper. So I've got a handout for this as well on my blog. You're welcome to download it and use it however you see fit. I've managed to chop it off uh, halfway down the sheet so that I'm able to split it in two different examples that I can use. So for the first piece that I've got here, oh, got to bring my friends. First piece that I've got, the function is y equals 2, which most of us will be able to recognize as a horizontal line. But it's a good place to emphasize that students can choose whatever they want to on their domain, because we're not yet regarding what the domain is for the piecewise defined function. So I'm going to choose some pretty big ones here. I'll go heck, negative 8, negative 4, 0, 4, 8, and just to cap things out on the side of my graph paper here, I'll use a 10. But regardless of what I pick, heck, I might as well have chosen 10 pi while I was at it. Regardless of what I choose as an input on these, the output that I'm going to get is always going to be 2. So 2, 2, 2, all over the place. So it gives us our horizontal line for that portion. For the center function that I have here, disregarding its domain as well, just x plus 4. Is another one where we're able to choose whatever domain we want to. And this one, I'm going to go a little more traditional, just because these numbers will be familiar to students that are able to fill out tables of values in general. And then just adding four to each of those. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and set. And then plotting those points becomes pretty easy for us. So let's see. Extending it in both directions is something I'm going to emphasize on this one because we know its domain later on is going to have to extend a little bit further to hit negative 5 and positive 4. But I'm going to kind of keep that a secret. Just play along with me for a little bit, if you will. On the third portion of this piecewise function, I've got just negative 1 half x, which is a good place for students to see we don't like dealing with fractions, and that's just one of those things that they can work around it. And it's not a matter of them not liking it. It's them being crafty and not dealing with messy numbers. So when we choose some numbers on these, I tend to choose even numbers because students are going to recognize that it will undo the denominator that we see appearing here, and they won't have to regard those fractions uh, any longer. So there. My focus on those is just inputs or x values that happen to be even numbers. So that would be 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Two. Nails the origin. A couple points off that direction. Voila. Three pieces, three separate functions and no indication as to what the domain was on any of them. I forgot to write that part down there. Now if I start indicating the domain on these things, let's see on the left I need x less than or equal to negative 5, they're between negative 5 up to and including positive 4 and then here just x bigger than 4. So if I start over here, where x is less than or equal to negative 5, there's negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm able to hack that off. And at least identify where the end point is for that segment of a graph. So when it includes the negative 5 this time, I want to make this a solid point. So I'll make it really solid, shiny, all that stuff. And the part that I want to keep is where x is less than negative 5. Clear over to the left. So shiny, like Tin Man because I'm from Kansas. This one here, where x is negative 5. Flip this over here on our graph. And then where x was positive 4. There on the graph. So it's not actually including at negative 5 this time, so I'll make a big old open circle there to emphasize that. At positive 4, I am including it, so 
include this one. Big, obvious. If x is greater than positive 4, I want students to indicate where that is. So There's that line indicating where the x values are 4. And if it's not actually including 4, I want an open circle with that one indicating that it's not actually included. The hint that I've given when we constructed these in class the first time I ran through it is that we want to fold the outer grass. Oops, let me get some more smiley faces on here. There, there's the pieces that I want to keep. So the pieces I want to keep here on the far right and the far left, I'm actually going to fold those back so they'll be out of sight, out of mind here just for a moment. The idea being that we're going to take those pieces and fold them inward so that they match up with the vertical posts that we've set up on the middle graph here. So with that one to make it look like it just picks up at negative 5 where the other one left off. I'm able to do that pretty quickly. And obviously, students are able to conclude where that open circle was and the closed circle where it was, or where it indicates uh, what value actually belongs to negative 5, or where f of negative 5 would occur within this function. Also, it verifies that we've passed the vertical line test. And if I swing the rest of this back over to join the rest of the party, at positive 4, there's the rest of our graph. And one more time, placing emphasis on the fact that it still passes the vertical line test because it's included here for x equals 4 and not there. Up to, but not including x equals 4, and we're good to go. Okay. Hope you've enjoyed my example with piecewise defined functions.